Medical Triads Part 1 at the NIMS. Here we go. Muffled heart sounds, distended neck veins, and hypotension. Name the triad and the associated condition. Muffled heart sounds, distended neck veins, and hypotension. Whose triad is this? Beck's triad, B E C K. And you can see this with what? Cardiac tamponade, right? Right upper quadrant pain, fever, and jaundice. Name the triad and the associated condition. Right upper quadrant pain, fever, jaundice. Yes, this is Charcot's triad. And you might see this with acute cholangitis. Now the other two things that'll make this Reynolds pentad include what? Right, hypotension and altered mental status. And that is Reynolds pentad when you have all five of those. All right, stasis hypercoagulability, and endothelial damage. So name the triad and the significance of this triad. Stasis, hypercoagulability, and endothelial damage. This is Virchow's triad. And these are risk factors, major risk factors for thrombosis. All right, oral ulcers, genital ulcers, and uveitis. Name the triad and the associated disease oral ulcers, genital ulcers, and uveitis. So the eyes, the mouth, and the genitals. This is Bechet's disease, B-E-H, squiggly C-E-T, Bechet's disease. And this is a systemic inflammatory disease that can affect both the arteries and the veins. All right, next, interstitial keratitis, notched incisors, and eighth nerve deafness. Name the triad and the associated condition. Some other buzzwords, saber shins and saddle nose deformity. This is Hutchinson triad. And you'll see this with congenital syphilis. So interstitial keratitis, notched incisors, and eighth nerve deafness make up the triad. But the other things you'll commonly see are saber shins and a saddle nose deformity. Okay, name the triad and associated condition. Hypertension, bradycardia, and irregular respirations and or a narrow pulse pressure. So there's actually four things here. Hypertension and bradycardia and then irregular respirations or sometimes narrow pulse pressure. This is the Cushing triad. This represents what? Yes, increased intracranial pressure. Now to remember this, just think the opposite of sepsis. So in sepsis, you're tacky, you have a wide pulse pressure, you're hypotensive. With the Cushing triad, you have hypertension, bradycardia, and a narrow pulse pressure. And you also have, you can get irregular respirations. These can be fast or slow. Okay, now this, is indicative, can be indicative of either ischemia or compression of arterials that you get with intra or increased intracranial pressure. If you see this, it's bad news. So the Cushing reflex confers a very high probability of death. Next triad, petechiae, altered mental status, and dyspnea. What triad is this? And what is the associated phenomenon? So petechiae, which is often a late finding, often seen on the trunk, altered mental status, and dyspnea. Yes, this is Bergman's triad. And the associated phenomenon, fat emboli. And this often occurs after long bone fractures up to 24 to 72 hours after injury. And early correction and immobilization is used to prevent this, okay? So low molecular weight heparin does not work. It's all about early correction and immobilization of a long bone fracture, okay? And that's Bergman's triad, petechiae, which is a late finding on the trunk usually, altered mental status, and dyspnea. Setting fires, animal cruelty, and bedwetting. 
also known as enuresis. Yes, this is actually a triad, a medical triad, a famous one. So setting fires, animal cruelty, and bedwetting. Name the triad and the clinical disorder. This is McDonald triad of sociopathy, sociopathy. So sociopaths will often report a history of these events in their childhood. Thus, they are believed to be a predictor of future violence. Interesting, right? Now let's say you see a kid that has set fire to an animal and pees on it to put the fire out. That's pathognomonic. All right, next try it. Sam, oh shoot. Nasal polyposis, aspirin allergy, and asthma. I almost gave this away. So nasal polyposis, an aspirin allergy, and asthma. Can you name the triad and the associated condition? This is Sampter's triad. S-A-M-T-E-R, Sampter, Sampter's triad. And this often represents an aspirin-induced asthma. And they can, these patients can also have an NSAID allergy. And the first symptom is often rhinitis. Last one. So name the triad and the associated condition. Here we go. Meniscus. Anterior cruciate ligament and the medial collateral ligament. So when all three of these are damaged. So the meniscus, the anterior cruciate ligament, the ACL, and the medial collateral ligament. So name the triad and the associated condition when you see injury to these three things. You'll be very unhappy if you miss this one. This is O'Donohue's unhappy triad. So the triad refers to a complete or partial tear of the ACL, the medial collateral ligament, and the meniscus. And that's it for Medical Triads Part 1, Eponyms. Until next time, so long, goodbye.